my how I edit video series. Now this is a pretty broad topic so I've divided this video into, into smaller segments that I'll be releasing each week. So please make sure you hit subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. Also if you click on the description down below you'll be able to see how I've broken this video down so you can pick and choose the bits that are most relevant for you and my social media links are all at the bottom as well so please make sure you go give me a follow. So I have touched on this topic before um, but today I want to show you how I use colour grading in Lightroom to create my own LUT so that I've got consistency between my social media and also my YouTube videos. So in this first video I want to talk about colour grading um, and specifically how I use Lightroom to create my LUT. So LUT stands for look up table and it's basically a file that you drop over your video that will remap every color and every shade to a different color and a different shade. The best way I can describe it is if you look at a Michael Bay movie, for example Transformers, it's got a very specific look compared to maybe a Tarantino movie which has an alternative look. You can really identify a Michael Bay movie just by the colour, even if you don't hear the sound or you don't see the actors, you can kind of tell it's a Michael Bay movie. And LUT helps create that look and feel, and I'm going to show you how to make one yourself today. Now, you can go online and buy a LUT or a set of LUT files and put them on your video footage, and most of the time it will look great. But what I'm going to show you today is how I use Lightroom to create a colour grade that I like for my photos, and then transfer that same colour grade across into either Final Cut Pro or Premiere, so I've got consistency between my Instagram and my YouTube video. So Lightroom is the app we're going to use today. It's made by a company called Adobe. You can get it on a free trial, I think, for like two or four weeks. Um, and then after that, you pay monthly. In my opinion, it's a great app. I don't know any photographers that don't use it. However, it is very poorly designed. If you look at the screen here, you've got this wasted space around the image on the left and right. And this area on the right is the panel that we're going to be using for everything. And you can only make it this big. It can't get any bigger than that. So everything you need to do with all of your color tweaks is here on the right hand side. And annoyingly, it doesn't even fit on the screen, so you have to scroll up and down. And if you're on a smaller size Mac, this is really problematic. So whilst Lightroom is a great app, I don't think the interface is as good as it could be. So I opt to use what's called a loop deck. A loop deck is this, it's a USB keyboard. It's a bit smaller than a regular full size keyboard, but all of the keys on here relate to Lightroom and Lightroom only. So I just want to clarify, this isn't a paid promotion. I do genuinely use the Loop Deck and I will be showing you other hardware throughout this series that I use. Um, if it's promoted, I will tell you, but this is something I actually use in my day-to-day -day process and I find it very, very easy. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I want the color consistency to be the same across my social networks and also my YouTube channel. So for me, to do the color grade in Lightroom makes sense because I can then export that file into a LUT put that in my video editing software and everything kind of gels quite nicely. If I did the color grade in Final Cut or in Premiere first, it's a lot harder to kind of then replicate the same colors in my photos, if that makes sense. So today we're gonna to use this photo. It was taken uh, last year by the waiter that actually delivered our breakfast. Now this wasn't taken with a big expensive camera. My thought on this is that if you've already got a $10,000 camera, you probably don't need this tutorial. So this shot was taken with a cheap point and click Sony RX100 um, using all the standard settings and shooting in JPEG. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fix the horizon and that's super simple with a loop deck. I just turn the rotate and crop dial until I'm happy with it. And when I get to where I'm happy, I just let go and it will fix the horizon. I think we can go one back, yeah. Now, despite the foreground being a little bit dark, I'm quite happy with the exposure. The clouds aren't too bleached out, so I'm gonna leave the exposure and I'm gonna leave the contrast as it is. I may adjust those later. The first setting I'm gonna adjust is the highlights. And to do that, I simply turn the highlights dial on the loop deck right the way down. I think we're gonna set this at around about 40. This is typically how I do most of my color grading. It's just a personal preference. And now I'm gonna bring up the shadows. You'll see both myself and Pia, we're quite dark skinned and we were underexposed in the picture. So I'm gonna bring those up to around about 70. So you can see there, it's starting to get a nice color tone in the skin. The whites could probably come up a fair bit as well. I think I'll pop those at around about 35. 
That picture's looking quite good. Now, because there's such nice detail on the table, typically I don't apply clarity, but in this instance, I will I'll add a little bit of clarity, maybe just uh, about 10. Now, I'm gonna reduce the saturation a fair bit. The reason for that is it's gonna enable me to pump up the channels that I wanna pump up later without the whole thing looking like a big rainbow. So let's bring that down to around about 25, that's good. Now normally when I'm color correcting, I don't have to do this, but I'm gonna scroll down the screen just to show you the changes that are happening in, in Lightroom as I do them on, on the loop deck. So the first group of settings that I'm gonna adjust are the hue. And I've got these job dials along here um, for red, orange, yellow, green, etc. So I'm gonna adjust the orange because that's typically where skin tones sit, for me especially. So I'm gonna bring those down even more towards the red. So the first group of settings that I'm gonna adjust are the hue, and I do that by simply pressing the hue button on the loop deck, and to start with, I'm gonna adjust the oranges. I'm gonna bring those right the way down towards, more towards the red, really. I want our skin to look like a beautiful golden burnt orange rather than the olive skin that I typically am. There's quite a bit of yellow fruit on the table. I want that to appear a bit more sun-kissed, so I'm gonna bring the yellows down as well probably even a bit further. I might even drop that to about 25, there we go. See, if you look at the mango on the screen, it's a little bit more mango colored and a little bit less yellow. The next color slider I'm gonna adjust is the greens. There's a green cushion over to the right, which I want to make a little bit more green, so we'll pump that up to around about 20. Now this is where it gets fun. Typically, aqua addresses the ocean tones and blue addresses the sky. So we've got a little bit of control here. We can adjust the color of the sky without affecting the color of the ocean, which is super cool. So with the aqua, I'm gonna bring that right the way down to 100, and you can see that's immediately started to pop. Next, we're gonna adjust the sky. Now, I'm not gonna adjust it as much because I don't like this fluoro blue sky thing that's kind of trending right now. I want my sky to look a little bit more uh, retro. So I'm gonna knock that down probably by just about 30, should we say. Maybe a bit less, there we go, 25. So you can see there's a very distinct hue difference between the ocean and the sky, and that's exactly how I want it to be. There's actually no point in adjusting the purples or the magentas. If I play with these here, you'll see there's no real change. There's not really any uh, purples or magentas in this shot. Now the next thing I wanna do is adjust the saturation. So on the loop deck, I just hit the saturation button and I go again. So with the reds, I'm gonna pump that to around about 25 and the oranges, I'm gonna push up to around about 25 as well. Now what you'll notice there is that's immediately giving our skin a real burnt, sun-kissed look, which is exactly what I want for that retro feel. Now the mango and the orange juice in the picture is looking a little bit dull, so I'm gonna push that up as well. I'm actually gonna to go to about 30 on that. I want that to look really nice and popping. Now that green cushion is really standing out, so I think I need to dull that down a little bit. So I'm gonna bring the green down probably to around about 25 under. If I flick between the two, you can immediately start to see how much of a difference we've created already. Now with the ocean, I want that to appear even more aqua, even more kind of glowing. So I'm gonna push that right the way up to around about 50. Now with the blue, that's gonna affect mainly the sky. So I'm actually gonna bring that down. I'm gonna bring that down a fair bit to around about 25. Now I'm pretty happy with the saturation levels there. So the last thing left for me to do is adjust the luminance. Now to do that, I just hit the luminance button on the keyboard and I go again through the channels. So with the red, I'm gonna pump that to about plus plus 10. I want the, uh, the reds and the oranges and the yellows, which are primarily where the, the skin tone set, to be a little bit lighter because I'm still a little bit dark in this shot. So we'll push the oranges up to about 40. You can immediately see the Pia's skin tone comes up nicely. And with the yellow, I'll probably push that up to about plus 20. Now the green on that cushion still looks a little bit too vibrant for me. I'd like it to look a little bit more washed out. So I'm gonna bring the luminance up a bit more. Probably to around about 25 there. Now the aqua, again, with the aqua of the ocean, the clearer the sea, the more shallow your mind thinks it is. I want the ocean to look super shallow and fresh. So I'm gonna push the luminance of the aqua up to around about plus 80. And with the blue, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction to create a little bit of contrast between the ocean and the sky. So I'm probably gonna come down to around about 
minus 30, there we go. So if I flick between the two, you can see a really big difference between the before and after. And that's exactly how I want my color grade to look, not just on Instagram, but also in my YouTube videos. So the next step in getting this color grade across into your video editing software is to save it as a preset in Lightroom. And to do that, all you have to do is click on the presets pane and click on the plus, and that'll bring up a little dialog box, give it your name, let's call this color grade LUT and we'll hit create. So now that that's set as a preset, it's not just gonna be useful for video, you can also apply that same preset to all of your photos moving forward. So when taking photos, it's really good to remember that there are so many variables, be it lighting, shadows, where you are, even the time of day. It's all gonna have an effect on how your photo looks when you put it onto the computer. So whilst you've got this preset now, you are gonna to have to tweak it every time you put a new photo in, but at least you've got a base to work from that's gonna have some sort of consistency throughout your images. So that ends the first part of this video. That's how you create your own custom color grade. In the next video, I'll show you how you go from Lightroom into Final Cut Pro or from Lightroom into Premiere, and that will then enable you to have consistency across your photos and your videos. Please do subscribe to this channel. Part two should be out in about a week, and from there we'll go into the more granular details on how I edit and how I cut to music, etc., etc. But for now, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.